recording. The recording will always be me in a corner feeling insecure about the way I look on camera, especially at that angle. Um, and it'll always just be the whiteboard that's getting recorded. You guys will never actually be in the recording. So for those of you who don't like that, uh, winning. Um, so what we're talking about here today is rectangular coordinates, right? And you guys have done this, but coordinates, it's a hard word to spell. Um, and really what, what that is based on is the Cartesian plane. The Cartesian plane was named for a famous French mac mathematician, Carti I don't know how to spell Cartesian. It is E-S-I-A-N. Uh, it was named for Rene Descartes. Um, and you'll see a lot of things in mathematics named after that dude because he was like pretty big back in the day. Um, and what you know it as is like the XY plane where you have an X axis that runs left to right and you have a Y axis that runs up and down. And basically all of your points on this Cartesian plane are like a distance from X or a distance from Y, right? And if you remember correctly, your point would always be X would be listed first and Y would be listed second. And when you plotted a point, right, this is our X, this is our Y, and whatever X was would be like a distance, X number, right, of spaces from this X coordinate. And your Y would be, well, I should say this, <laughs> this is Y. X is this many spaces, right? X many spaces in this direction, and Y would be in the up and down direction, and that would give you your point, right? Um, you guys have done this a million times. What we want to talk about a little bit, though, when we're talking about the Cartesian plane is quadrants. Because quadrants tell you a little bit about the plane in and of itself. This is quadrant one, right? The reason that's quadrant one and not one of the other ones, like where we're not starting it over here, is that quadrant one is where everything is positive. All of your X values are positive over here, and all of your Y values are positive over here, which is why we start counting our coordinates over there, right? Over here in quadrant two, if you think about it, your X coordinates are all negative over here, right? You're moving in this direction away from X. And so your X coordinates would be negative, but your Y coordinates are still positive, right? They're still on the upside. So here you've got positive, positive. Here you've got negative, positive. Down here in quadrant three, everything's negative. It's like talking to my aunt. Everything's negative. No matter which direction you approach it from, there's never going to be something positive. All right? But your X's are negative over here, right? We're going in this direction, and we're down below the X-axis, so your Y's are also negative. And then over here, right, in quadrant four, well, our X's are positive again, Oops, I'm making an X instead of a plus. And this time your Ys are negative. And so you can always tell what quadrant something is in. Any point, you could tell what quadrant it's in based on the signs. So if I had, say, negative 3, 4, we go, okay, well, we have a negative X and a positive Y. So we would know that that point would lie somewhere here in quadrant 2. Does that make some sense? You can always tell by what sign it is, where it's going to lie. Um, so I have a whole thing here on plotting points. 
I don't think you guys need a lot of help with that, but because I know we did a ton of it in in algebra two, but just to be on the safe side, see, this is what I mean. Like it does stuff, and I don't know how to make it not do it. But did you see that? I don't know why it's doing that. I'm not touching anything. It's not my fault. It's not a straight line, though. So say I have this point, negative 3, 4, right? We would know. Right? That our first point, our first coordinate, right, when we're looking at these points, the first one is always going to be our x value, and the second one is always going to be our y value. Here we have a negative 3, so we're going to go 3 in the negative direction. We're going to go 1, 2, 3, and then we've got 4 in our y, so we're going to go up 1, 2, 3, 4, and we would have a point right there at negative 3, 4. And I'm sure you guys remember all that, but I just wanted to make sure like, I know none of you are like dummies or anything like that, but I wanted to make sure you understood. Have any of you ever done a scatter plot before? Yes. Do you need to see one? They're they're awfully time consuming to do. So if you don't need to see one, I won't I won't do one. All right. That just skips this whole half a card right here, which saves me so much right there that I don't have to do that bottom half of the card and draw that. <clears throat> what we're about to move into is um, verifying right triangles and learning where the idea of the Pythagorean theorem comes from based on right triangles. You guys have done, you don't know what a scatter plot is, Kevin? A scatter plot is basically, say, you had a bunch of dates, like, like here you had years, and here you had some data attributed to those years, like magazine subscriptions. I'm going with that because that's the one that's on my card, right? Um, so we'll call it subscriptions. And we would call our years T for time, and this we'll call... I don't know, S for subscriptions. And we would create a chart based on those numbers. We would call this like say time and this S and number of subscriptions. Um, but unlike a graph here where you just have a point or you have a point that connects lines, you're doing an entire series of points, right? So if this was say 1980, Right, and this was 81, 82, 83, and this was like 14 million, 17 million, 19 million. That'd be a really popular magazine, by the way. 34 million. Here we would have all of our years that we're measuring, right? So, say if we started at 81 and it would go up to, you know, we'd have 82, 83. 84, and here we would have our million starting from our lowest at 14 up to all the way up to like 83. If we actually went, or 34, <laughs> 34. If we actually had that many, we would probably break it down a little differently. And we would plot all these points. So at 1980, which I didn't write in, of course, right here at 1980, we would have a point at 14 million, and then at 81, we'd have one at, you know, 17 million, right? And then, it, it, so we would be plotting points on that respect. I probably should turn that graph the other way, but it still works. Does that make some sense? So it's just a series of numbers, just a series of data points, and it can give us a trend, right? Um, which is going to move us into the Pythagorean theorem. Some of you guys know what the Pythagorean theorem is, right? A squared plus B squared equals C squared. 
Well, all of the Pythagorean theorem comes from is the idea of the coordinate plane, right? We're creating right triangles, which is how we know that the Pythagorean theorem works. So if I have a, let's see how good, like the old one, remember if I drew a triangle, it would just like draw the triangle for me and I would correct it. So say I have a triangle. Gosh, man. I can't fix what I'm doing if I don't know what I'm doing wrong. So here I have a right triangle. We'll make it a right triangle by putting that in there. B, C. And we know the Pythagorean theorem would say that the two sides, the square of the two sides, A squared plus B squared, would equal the square of the hypotenuse, right? We know that. Um, and if I were to put that triangle, on a coordinate plane, right? Say so I have a triangle, a right triangle on this plane. If I had a point here, which is like, we'll just call it x1, and then this point here we'll call our, we'll call the x2, and here we would have a y. Right. right, we'd have these points, right? We're just marking the distances, right? If we looked at this distance right here, it's just the difference between of y2 minus y1, right? Like that's all that is. It would be the absolute value, right? Because it's going to be a positive distance. So we would know that a is just y2 minus y1, right? In the same respect, this distance on this one right here is just that x2 minus x1, right? And it's the absolute value of those. So if I wanted to find the actual distance between this point or the length of this, I could find these two lengths and take our a squared plus our b squared, and it would equal this, le ooh, this length right here, squared, right? Does that make some sense? So what we came up with was this thing that we call the distance formula, right? Because I know that this length right here right? If this was our a, this length squared, this y squared minus y1 squared plus this length right here, right, would give me this length, the distance between those two points, right, which is the absolute value of x2 minus x1 squared. And all of this would be equal to this hypotenuse, which we would call the distance squared, because what we're looking for is the distance between two points. We can find the distance between two points always by understanding uh, the, this principle. What is y2 and y1, x2, x1? Well, x1, y1 is just one coordinate point, right? I can call any point on here, x1, y1. Say I want to find the distance between this point and this point, right? I can call this point x1, y1, and then this point x2, y2, right? It's just a way that we identify which point is which, right? So if we look at this, what we're trying to find is the actual distance, not the square of it, right? And so if I want to know what the square root of this is, right? I want to know what d is. I want to know what that distance is. All I would do is take the square root of both sides. Well, the square root of d squared is just d. And then this would equal y2 minus y1 squared plus 
x2 minus x1 squared. And the reason is once we plug those numbers in, we're going to take the square root of them and it's just going to give us that distance. That's where that distance formula comes from. So if I'm given any two points, just knowing this, I can find the distance between those two points, right? Because now I have a formula and that's what this is right here. This is the distance formula. And the distance formula will give you the distance between any form, formula, not formula, right? And so let's play with this a little bit. If I have a point, we'll say negative 2, 1, and 3, we'll call it 4, because that's what I think I wrote. But either way, we'll find the right answer. 3, 4, right? So we have two points. We want to find the distance between those two points. Well, which one's x1, y1? Which one's x2, y2? It's arbitrary. We can call either one x1, y1, or x2, y2. I like to go in order. So I'm going to call this one x1, y1, and I'm going to call this one x2, y2. And I'm only labeling them so that I can see how to plug them in, right? So y2 we know is 4 so i'm going to put in 4 minus y1 well that's negative 2. notice that's 4 minus negative 2 squared i always write it like that so that i can remember to turn it into a plus and then we've got plus there's a button i'm pushing i'm gonna to have to go in and like reset all the settings on this pen and then we've got, well, we've got – did I do my numbers wrong? I do. Yeah, I did. Do you see what I did wrong? Did anyone catch it? I almost didn't. This is 4 y2 minus y1. y1 is just 1. Right? It's not negative 2. Then we've got x2. Well, x2 is 3 minus x1, which that's where our negative 2 comes in. And so now we're going to do the math on that. Again, I always put the negatives together to remind me that that's a plus, right? Negative and a negative is a plus. Valerie, wave at me. You were looking like a machine over there. Like you're starting to like whoosh in and out of the tooth. So <laughs> um, and so now we just have to solve this, right? Well, I've got the square root. 4 minus 1 is 3. 3 squared is 9. Plus 3 plus 2 is 5. 5 squared is 25. When I add these together, 9 plus 25 is 34. And so our solution here would be the square root of 34. Do I have to break that down? Not really. We know the distance between those two points is the square root of 34. And you can do that with any two points. And I'm not going to have you guys do it. Normally, I'd have you do a problem on your own. But I'm not going to do that today because I've spent way too much time on this and I think I'm running out of it. Eh, not too bad. I'm not too bad. Um, because the reason that I'm showing it to you today is I wanted to talk to you about verifying right triangles and we're going to use the distance formula ample numbers of times. So is there anyone here who isn't comfortable with the distance formula? I know we used it a lot in Algebra 2. So if you aren't comfortable with it, let me know. Um, but really, it is just a matter of uh, attributing um, an x1, 
y1, x2, y2, and then plugging it into the formula. It's really a plug and chug kind of a thing. But when we're verifying right triangles, what do we know about right triangles? We know that a squared plus b squared equals c squared, right? So if I say verify that uh, points 2, 1, 4, 0, and 5, 7 are right triangles, are, are form a right triangle or vertices of a right triangle. I think that's how they put it, are vertices of a right triangle. What we're going to do is we're going to find the distance of each of the, from each of these points, right? We're going to have to do the distance formula three times to verify this, right? So let's make a triangle, right? So we can even do it like on, we can plot the points, right? If we want to, you know. Well, here I have one at two, one, so we'll call that a point right there. And then I have another one at four, zero, so we've got a point right there. And then I have another one at five, seven, so we'll call that something like up here, right? And we're going to make a triangle based on these points, right? Now, I don't know what part is right. Or not I just know that these are points right this one is two one this one is four zero this one is five seven right but what it does tell me is that I need to find the difference between these two points these two points and these two points I shouldn't call them ABC because I don't know yet which one the hypotenuse would be, right? I just know that when I get three distances, two of them should add up to the other, right? Well, the squares of two of them should add up to the square of the other. So I'm going to do distance one. Why don't we even change this? We'll call this D1. We'll call this D2 and this D3, right? And so if I want the distance D1, what I know is that I have the square root of um, y2 minus y1. So I'll make this my 2, 7 minus 1 squared plus the x's minus each other. So 5 minus 2 squared. And I'm going to find that distance. And if I look at d2, it's going to be. Same thing, right? We're going to take the square root and say I make this my x2, y2, and I'll go, okay, well, I've got one, ooh, I lost the ability to write. Here I'll go 1 minus 0 squared, right? Here I will go 2 minus 4 squared plus 2 minus 4 squared. And then on this one, we're going to find the difference between these two points. And we're going to do the same thing three times. My hand is starting to ache. I haven't done this in a while. I'm like all out of practice. So here, doesn't matter which one I make, x2, y2, right, or x1, y1. So here I'm going to go 7 minus 0. squared plus 5 minus 4 squared and we're going to find the different distance between each of these points well if i look at the first part 7 minus 1 just equals 6 and 6 squared 
right, equals 36. So here I've got the square root of 36. 5 minus 2 is 3. 3 squared is 9, so that's going to be plus 9. And that's going to give me the square root of 45, right? Here, I'm going to go, well, 1 minus 0 squared is just 1 squared, which is 1, right? Plus 2 minus 4, well, that's negative 2, but negative 2 times negative 2 is positive 4. So we're going to have 1 plus 4, which gives me the square root of 5. And then here, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to go, okay, well, 7 minus 0 is just 0. 7 squared is 49. My square root symbol is ugly there. 49 plus 5 minus 4 is 1. 1 squared is just 1. So we have the square root of 50. Now think about this. When I put these together to see if they work, I know that 5 plus 45 equals 50, right? So I know these are going to be my a, b, and this is going to be my c, right? So if I have a squared, that's going to be square root of 45 squared plus the square root of 5 squared needs to equal the square root of 50 squared. And if you look at that, square root of 45 squared is just 45, right? Plus 5 equals 50. And so we verified that that's a right triangle. Does that make some sense? So it's just multiple uses of the distance formula. And you'll be able to see right off the bat, right? Because you can add. Don't break down your square roots for this, right? Don't try and look at that and go, oh, well, 45 is 9 times 5, so that's 3 root 5, <laughs> right? Don't, don't get too complicated with it. Just find the distance between each set of points. Yes, Kevin? It doesn't matter. It's arbitrary. You can use any order you want. Yeah, you just have to make sure that you're getting the length between for each line, right? So one of them is 2.1, and so I could have made any one of these. Oops, I need that to go away. So here I just picked D1 because it was the first one I landed on, right? So I made it the distance between those two. This side I made D2, and this side I made D3. But it doesn't matter. It's totally arbitrary which ones you choose as long as you, yeah, yeah, and you just kind of want to see where the points lie so you know what you're, you know, so that you can kind of keep track of it. I always like to draw the triangle so that I can see, but it really doesn't matter because really you're going to find the points, the, the distance between each set. Right. That's a good question. Any other questions on that? That's the last of what you're getting today. I had more. There's like a few other things to do, but I didn't think we'd have time to get it all in. And it looks like I'm right because it's 102 right now. And there's no way I could have gotten more done in, in 10 minutes time um, and not give you guys a little bit of time at the end, you know. Um, the other part of, of this section is... Gosh, I can't even remember. It's another thing dealing with right triangles and then it's application problems. So word problems dealing with right triangles. Um, but they'll all be pretty basic. Like you'll wind up with three different points or two different points. And it's really going to be finding a lot of either distances between points or or verifying type of stuff. So I, I, or like the length of a pass across a field. So you just have to find the two points on the field and then uh, use the distance formula to, to figure it out. Um, so it's not gonna be anything too extravagant. So the next lesson should be a fairly short one. I just didn't think that we had time to cover it all in one. Um, so when you get to, WebAssign, and you're going to do your assignment on WebAssign. I guess I don't need to be recording all this.